Do 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 do. Well, we have a classic high bank right here. And luckily for us, we've got short Skagit heads and a really short rod. In fact, a single hand rod, seven and a half foot three weight, 150 grain commando head with a commando tip on. We got five feet and this right here uh, is a three weight. And we're in a pretty much a classic high bank spot here where overhand casting, no bueno, okay? You're not gonna be able to do it, but luckily, now that we have short Skagits, uh, this, all this stuff right here is attainable. And what I'm gonna do here is pretty much just make some presentations out here to the middle and show you just how I would stay away from this bank so you can still make a proper lead loop and uh, get your fly out to where it needs to be. Let's just do a uh, upstream single spay, okay? When I do an upstream single spay, okay, I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna come into the bank and out, and that's gonna drop my fly right out here so I can come out and go straight forward like so, okay? I'm gonna do that a few more times. Again, in, out, touch, and gone. This is just, this is just a touch and go, okay, super easy. Now I'm gonna do a upstream peri poke. We're still going off the upstream side. So with this, I'm gonna come up and stop, okay? See my anchor land down there? We're gonna get the anchor up a little more. And when I, when I bring the anchor up, I'm also gonna bring it out, up and out. Poke down, around, and go, okay? Just like so. Don't forget to, to keep your eye on your come around because most people, they, they, they either speed up right here or they don't look and then their, their D-loop gets caught in the trees, the grass or any obstacle that's gonna be behind you or above you. So when you come up here and you drop your anchor, make sure your eyes rotate around with your D-loop, okay? Because if you don't, you're taking the eye out of hand-eye coordination. You wouldn't drive down the street with your eyes closed, so why would you cast without looking at what you're doing? It's, uh, it's the best way to figure out what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. So up, out, stop, drop, around, and go, okay? Throw a little men in there, get that thing sunk. And right now it's gonna engage. Some places where I fish out on the coast, uh, you know, I want guys casting off their upstream side, but they, when they do their snap tee or their sea spay, they do it regular. And when they do it regular, what happens is, is the fly lands right here. And if it lands right there, you're gonna have too much of a D loop to come around and go through just cause the bank's right here. This is a high bank spot. So everything you do with Skagit casting drives off anchor placement, okay? And uh, a couple things can, uh, can mess around with that. That's wind, that's the side of the river you're on, uh, whether you're on a high bank uh, and how fast the river's flowing, okay? There's a lot of different things. Uh, to factor in when you're when you're talking about spay casting. So if anchor placement is an issue here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up putting my anchor out here more, not here. Okay, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna give us more of a wind up into our D loop. And to do that, you can either come in and barrel roll to put your stuff out here so you can still make a D and come around and go or you can just come up and out and touch and go and then go forward. Just depends on what you want to do, but I'm going to actually come in towards the bank and barrel roll out towards the middle, out and around and through, okay? Just like so. And you can pretty much, you can pretty much cover this entire river with that one cast. Uh, even on this high bank where, where overhand casting is not an option, uh, coming from your downstream side and the wind side is precarious. Okay, see how far out it lands? That's what we're looking for. In and around, barrel roll out into here, rip around and through, okay? Just like so. And then we can fish from here. You can drop a little bit of line, you can speed it up and then chug it right through there. See if somebody comes up out of the depth. But yeah, this is, 
this is probably my most useful tip, you know, when guys, when guys swing with me for the most part with steelhead, because look, we're doing a lot of high bank stuff and we've got, there's always trees around and I don't like stepping below trees. So if you can, if you can figure out all your anchor placements, so you don't have to worry about uh, stepping past fish or stepping past good water, uh, the better off you're going to be. And I guess the thing that we're trying to uh, reiterate that is if you have a single hand rod, you like fishing trout, and you fish some tight spaces that maybe aren't as easy with the regular single hand line, maybe try a commando and uh, give it a shot and see what you're capable of uh, as far as a fishery because, I mean, the options the options are endless as far as versatility and switching from dry to uh, a sinking line or uh, stripping flies, whatever. But as you can see, we don't really uh, we don't really need much of a back cast. You know, we're just using a sustained anchor, and we're getting right back in the in the game for the most part. So, if you have a single hand rod or you have a short spay, give these commando heads a shot and uh, read the reviews. We've turned some heads with these things and we, uh, we stand by them, without a doubt. I mean, it doesn't get a whole lot easier than that. <laughs>